I know that similar to Abyss headphones, ear reviews can be considered low-hanging fruit. The reason for this is that a large portion of the audio community considers this guy to be a complete joke. And surprisingly, there are no videos talking about this. Let's get started. Why should you not trust Z reviews? He has 253,000 subscribers, owns many headphones, and clearly is very knowledgeable. Only the first two statements were correct. If you go through Z reviews videos, what you'll notice is that he calls almost every product good. Almost all of these are positive reviews. It's extremely rare that Z reviews gives a negative review. He provides no measurements telling you why something is good. He always includes affiliate links in the description. He says a product is good and you buy it, guess what, he gets a cut. For example, let's look at his review of the Kinera Nana 2.0, his favorite IEM. For an entire 35 minutes, he talks about nothing that matters, all while having an anime girl in the background in a bunch of headphones. This IEM costs $949. What do you get for $949, you might be asking. I apologize for not having a diffuse field compensation. I couldn't find this IEM on any other graphing tools and I'm not paying for crinkles. We see extremely colored bass with way too much of an amount and random waves in the treble. This huge dip from 4 to 8 kilohertz completely kills the response. There's zero reason for this to be here. Here's what a Nana 2.0 user who bought the era 2 sc said. Been listening back and forth between era 2 sc and Nana 2.0. I highly prefer the era 2 sc now. My Nanas now feel like they have a vocoder filter on all vocals, making them sound really unnatural. So happy you guys introduced me to Eddie Modic. That's what happens when people back up their opinions with measurements and don't shill every product just to get money out of it. Music